Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Caterpillar's Digging Into History. I'm your host, Rusty Dunn. This person next to me, the expert purveyor of all stories relating to Caterpillar's storied past, Corporate Heritage Archives Manager Lee Fosberg. Lee, good to see you again. Hey, Rusty, I hope I can live up to that billing. Well, you're going to have to. I hope so. You have up until this point. Why not? Well, this is a little bit today, Lee, a bit of a show and tell story. And you can see the machine we have behind us here. Uh, but it's the story of the Los Angeles Aqueduct. It's how the city of Los Angeles gets its water. It's probably the world's most famous water conveyance system. Maybe you could argue that, but it was built in the very early years of the 20th century. It's construction made possible because of the machines like the one behind us. Talk about what we're seeing here. Well, very similar to this machine. This machine was probably built a little less than 10 years after. The only really difference between this and what worked on the aqueduct is horsepower. This is 75 horsepower. Those machines were 70. Work on the aqueduct started in the early years of the 1900s, 1908, I, I believe. It took five years to complete, officially opened in 1913. Lee, give us some background on how this project was even conceived sure. as ambitious as it was back then. Well, you know, it's the same time as great projects were starting across the world. You and I have talked a little bit about like the Panama Canal. This was during the same time period, probably almost as ambitious, right? Because you're bringing water across the Mojave Desert over 200 miles to the city of Los Angeles. So you're not just going across soft dirt, you're going across rocks and sand. Areas where traditional power, horses, and we would find out a little bit later, steam, did not work. So they turned to a new technology. And who had that technology? It was the whole Caterpillar tractor. They needed a new type of machine and, and this was it. And we know the whole tractor was designed originally for agricultural work. Tell us how the people overseeing the aqueduct project decided, yeah, we need something sort of experimental. I guess you would consider yeah. this experimental yeah. back in the day, yeah. yeah? So the chief engineer, William Mulholland, he was always fascinated in new technology. Well, you gotta remember, north of there was where Holt was located, in Stockton, California. So they heard about this track-type tractor. They came to Holt, and Holt demonstrated a prototype, which was his second prototype, and that machine, which was a gasoline-powered machine, worked really well. But kind of what scared them a little bit was it was a gasoline-powered machine, right? We're in an energy transition. How was that going to work? Well, Holt had a couple track-type tractors that were steam-powered. So they went with the steam-powered machine. And what Holt said, you know what? You use that machine, Rusty, for one month free, and then we'll sell them to you because we're going to prove that this is the machine for the job. Isn't this interesting? An early version of what we talk about today, the energy transition, and they were yeah. and they were going through it. All right, so Lee, once the testing was done with really a successful proof of concept established, I mean, the orders started coming in. Yes, oh, I mean, here did. come the Caterpillar tractors. They did, so it worked great, right? So they came back, they kept the steam-powered machine, and they bought three more gasoline-powered machines. Now, the steam-powered machine had some issues, right, because you needed to bring water into the desert. So the gas really worked. What that led to was over the eventual sales of 20 more gasoline-powered machines. Wow. So the aqueduct is finally finished. Los Angeles actually overtakes San Francisco as California's largest city. Obviously, a lot of growth, people coming into L.A but it meant big change, good change for Holt Caterpillar. They, they, they went global in Excellent. essence. You know, it was like the Panama Canal. So what happened is it received press across the globe. So it led to really almost immediate international sales. In fact, the first machine was sold to, in Austria, but they also then it kind of went to other places. The other big part of the change was Los Angeles becomes this huge city. But Holt went from 100 employees to very quickly 1,000 employees. A factory in Stockton, California, to growth to Peoria, Illinois, and to a plant in, in Canada. And you know what came out of this also was, Holt was the largest receiver of contracts to build this canal. It was over $140,000, you know, in like 1908 money. Isn't it amazing the impact of these high-profile, iconic projects and what it means for um, 
the, uh, our company yeah. in, terms of, uh, in terms of growth. Here's my favorite part. If you think about it, the LA Aqueduct has sort of become a iconic character itself. I mean, think about all the different movies. One of my favorite films, Chinatown. If you've, if you've not seen it, go see it. The, the musical, Grease. Uh, countless television shows picking the Aqueduct as a, yeah. as a set. Yeah, Mulholland Drive, right? One of my favorites, right? Named after Mulholland. You Abs know? Absolutely. And you know, Rusty, it makes sense, right? Because who was the company that built the Hollywood sign? It was one of our predecessors. It was a Caterpillar. The, the impact that, that the company had really on Los Angeles, but California overall and all these iconic things we've talked about, amazing. Isn't right, it? absolutely. Well, I look forward to the next digging into history adventure that we're going to have, Lee. And it, thank you so much for sharing your expertise as always. I can't see what we come up with next. As always, thank you, Rusty. Absolutely. And thanks to all of you for watching. We really appreciate it. Go out and be safe in everything you do. We'll see you soon.